A quick note, this episode contains adult content and violence that may be disturbing to some people. Listener discretion is advised, and please take care. Please be advised that this episode contains spoilers for Assassin's Blade as well as violent content. Listener discretion is advised. If you are interested in a non-spoilers discussion about Assassin's Blade, feel free to check out our last episode where we discuss our overall thoughts on the format flow, writing style, and more. Welcome to the first season of Perfectionist. I'm your host, Jacqueline. And I'm your host, Nicole. Thanks for joining us today. Selena Sardothian is her kingdom's most feared assassin. Though she works for the powerful Assassin's Guild and its scheming master, Aero bin Hamel, she yields to no one and trusts only her fellow killer for hire, Sam. But when Aerobin dispatches her on missions that take her from remote islands to hostile deserts, Selena finds herself acting independently of his wishes and questioning her own allegiance. If she hopes to escape Aerobin's clutches, Selena will have to put her faith in her wits and her blade, knowing that if she fails, she'll lose not just a chance at freedom, but her life. A prequel to the New York Times best-selling Throne of Glass, this collection of five novellas explores the history of this cunning assassin and her enthralling and deadly world. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about the very first book of the Throne of Glass series called The Assassin's Blade. It's actually a prequel, and it's um, actually a collection of five novellas in one book. So each novella features a different little story of our main heroine character, Selena Sardothian. So the very first novella and our kind of introduction to Selena is The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. What did you think of Selena when you first met her in the story? Oh, (laughs) I, uh, I immediately liked how sort of spicy her character was and I really Mm -hmm. enjoyed I honestly enjoyed her arrogance (laughs) yeah (laughs) her self-assuredness because she is she is hella arrogant (laughs) she's confident yeah no it's it's uh I, I I don't know I I I thought she was a very different female uh lead I hadn't come across maybe a character who was like that exactly like the way that she is what did you think Uh, I agree I hadn't really read about a character who had quite the same swagger that she has when we first met her yes (laughs) that's a great word to describe her (laughs) yeah and I think that at first I was a little off put yeah like what because you're not used to it and then oh yeah as you get to know her you're like yeah girl (laughs) (laughs) yes and it all starts to make sense yeah yeah I enjoyed her swagger I thought okay this should be interesting but I mean she can kind of back up her what she says so 100% right so is it arrogance if you are kind of able to do what you say and what you threaten Mm -hmm. (laughs) I yeah, arrogance or confidence, I guess, right. are those mutually exclusive. I, mm, I, I guess know. you have to decide for yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, but, the Pirate Lord bit. So, she's actually from a city called Rifthold. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is like the capital city? It seems to be say? the capital city, yeah, because that's where mm-hmm. um, the king kind of resides. resides. Yeah. So she is originally from Rifthold, um, but the way that the Assassin and the Pirate Lord book starts is it seems that one of her really good sort of fellow assassin friends, excuse Mm -hmm. me, he died. He was killed. Mm -hmm. He was murdered. Yeah, it almost seemed like this person was kind of like a father figure in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like an older gentleman who she really respected. Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was a really sad way to start the story. Where the pirate lord comes into it is they end up getting sent to this place called Skull's Bay, right? Mm-hmm. They think for revenge. 
because the because, pirates that's right Go are ahead. the ones who are yeah responsible for the death mm-hmm. of her friend yes so what's interesting about selena um in this story is that no one actually knows her real identity as an assassin. People know her mm-hmm. name, Selena Sardothian. They know that she's Adderland's assassin. Yeah, she's very famous in her role as yeah. an assassin. Exactly. But nobody knows what she looks like. And it's mm-hmm. because she wears this like full face mask that distorts her voice. Mm-hmm. Do you have like a clear picture in your head of what this mask looks like? I I, I do actually. And it's do you? I do. And I don't know if I read it or if, like, I don't know if they describe it or if I've just made something up. Like, yeah. I picture it as white. And I'm like, is oh, it white? Wow. Did they describe it as a completely different color? And I just, like, disregarded their description? <laughs> I can't remember. I actually don't know either. Um, I picture it as black. So, like, the complete oh, polar opposite. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any other features that are that stick out to you with your imagination in the um, for me, it's like it's a, a white kind of porcelain looking mask, which is right. so impractical and it's obviously not actually what it is. But for some <laughs> reason, this is what my brain still pictures, even though I know it's not. And I find I do this a lot with this series where I'll mm-hmm. picture things that I know are wrong, but right. my brain's like, nope, this is how we're going to picture it. And it just won't let me undo it. But it's like a white porcelain mask. I think, you know what? I think it might be similar to the mask that they had in the Pretty Little Liar series. Oh, okay. And I think that's why I'm picturing it that way. Right. Now that I'm now right. that I'm talking about it. Yeah. I think that's what it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. I was actually mine is completely different from yours. I was imagining it kind of like Kylo Ren on Star Wars, but oh, not okay. as futuristic mm-hmm. and like more ancient and kind of gothic looking. Oh, but so how, we both took inspiration from yes things we've seen before, but completely different inspirations. Yeah, totally. And also, um, when she was talking about how it distorts her voice, that was something that happens mm-hmm. on Star Wars too, right? With the mask. Right. So that's kind of how I was imagining it. It distorted her voice like that. But yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, such totally different visions we have for the same thing, which is so <laughs> cool. But yeah, so she's she's in this mask and it's really hot there, um, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's kind of like on the seaside. But um, yeah, and I think it's summer. I could be wrong about that, but I want to say it's summer. I want to assume it is because she was just sweating mm-hmm. under that mask and the cloak and everything. We could really get into it intensely, but let's let's not do too many details but essentially they thought they were sent there for the revenge for ben death yeah turns out Mm -hmm. they weren't they were sent there to do a a deal a business deal and their product is slaves yeah which is completely against selena's morals and yes she has morals as an assassin and we find that out very quickly and this is one of the biggest ways that we kind of are introduced to that aspect of her character is she's appalled when she finds out that they're actually there to make a deal with trading slaves. Yeah, she is so appalled. And that really, really stood out to me because because she kills for a living. Mm-hmm. Um, but yet that is for her, that is crossing the line. Slave, slaves are innocent people. And mm-hmm. when she she was made to feel that when they were killing people, it was it, they were kind of people that weren't good people. They were bad yeah. guys, kind of. So I think that's how she was able to justify her profession to herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think she would only accept certain contracts. Yeah. And what she thought the person deserved in some way or another. The yeah. Fate that she was going to deliver to them. Yeah. Yeah, she won't stand for the slaves being no. taken and sold and she devises a plan. She's there with another assassin named Sam and mm-hmm. she's not sure if Sam knew about this plan and is on team slave or if he is kind of thinking the same thing as her, that this is absurd. So she devises this plan all on her own to free the slaves. Yes. Yeah. But it turns out Sam is on her side 100%, yes. 100%. which is, which is great because then they can work together to free the slaves. 
and they do. And it's, it's very exciting the way that it happens. Um, Mm -hmm. but what, what's super interesting is the way that the whole, the whole adventure changed their relationship because she was kind of, um, competitive and disdainful towards him before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She very much thought of him as competition. Mm -hmm. And now I think she was starting to get a glimpse at like, oh, he could be an ally in some situations. Like they worked very well together and they seemed to acknowledge that they were able to pull off this crazy stunt Yes. in um, a way with like a lot of flair as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And we have a moment where we think Sam might have gotten injured or, or killed or, um, when he's saving the slaves, but thankfully he was able to wiggle his way out of that and they were yes. both safe yes. for the moment. For the moment. And that leads us into the assassin and the healer, yeah. which starts off with Selena. Um, confronting Arobin, who is her master. He's like mm-hmm. the king of assassins. Yes. And he's the one who set up this uh, the slave agreement. So she's yes. gone behind his back and freed the slaves. Yeah, she's so, totally disobeyed his orders, like completely, mm-hmm. not even just disobeyed, but actually went against and probably lost him a whole ton of money. <laughs> he did not like this at all. He brutally beat her for this. Mm-hmm. And as he's doing so, he's um, Sam is being held back, and, yeah. they're, and he's having to watch this, and yeah. she's just completely destroyed, yeah. like physically. Physically, yeah. He 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 beats the heck out of her, mm-hmm. and I'm sure emotionally as well. There's some damage yeah. there. There's some. Her relationship with Aerobin is very weird. It's yes. strange. It's a strange well, relationship. He- I'm not sure if it's in this particular novella, but I feel like at some point she mentions she's not sure if he's like a father figure, a brother, a lover, romantic love. Yeah. Like, it seems to be even she isn't quite aware of what he's trying to be to her. Yeah, and she's she's definitely not aware, mm-hmm. um, and that that gives it kind of a weird. It's actually really skillfully done because mm-hmm. personally, when I read about a, a Robin and oh, he's good looking and stuff, but then when you know that she, like she doesn't know her relationship sort of status with him yeah. or how it's supposed to be, and also knowing that he took her in when she was a little girl, it yeah. just gives such a gross like. There's something icky about it. It's it's very icky, which. I mean, yeah, he's the king of assassins. He's turned this little girl into an assassin. And she's now a teenager. It is mm-hmm. icky. <laughs> yeah. It is icky. On many sure. levels. Yeah. So, but the beating's not the only punishment that Selena is given. She's also given this impossible task, seemingly, of going to the desert to get approval from the mute master. So in the story, she is on her way to the desert. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of part of her travels. Yeah. So in The Assassin and the Healer, she's introduced to the scene. She's in a tavern, it seems like, a, kind of a low, like a kind of a gross tavern mm-hmm. um, in this village called Inish. And, but you know what? We actually don't really even see from her point of view right away. I think it's all from this other character called Irene? Is it Irene? I believe so. And she's kind of noticing like Selena in the corner and her hood's pulled over her face and the shadows are cast across her face. And it's probably Mm -hmm. because of all of the bruises that she has and injuries. And I think she likes to kind of stay in the shadows in general, but I think the bruising probably added to her wanting to stay covered up. Yes. So when we do get to Selena's point of view, she's just itching for a fight, isn't mm-hmm. she? Yeah, she is hoping someone will start something. She doesn't necessarily want to start a fight, but she wants to finish a fight. Yes, she's just itching for a fight. And I kind of wonder if it's because, you know, she was beaten. She's not allowed to fight back against mm-hmm. Aerobin, but that is so ingrained in her that, you know, she 
feels like she needs to expend this aggressive energy somehow. And yes. it kind of sets up a pattern of this behavior, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something we definitely see from her as we move forward. So a lot of this novella focuses, as we said, on Irene. And we see her perspective probably about the same amount as we see Selena's. Um, and she ends up getting herself into a bit of trouble. She goes out, I think, to take out the garbage or something at the end mm-hmm. of the night. Mm-hmm. And a group of people go to attack her. And Selena, looking for a fight, saw this as a perfect opportunity to get yeah. out some of that pent up frustration. Yes. I did feel that this particular scene compared to the assassin in the Pirate Lord, mm-hmm. I did feel like for some reason that her fighting in this scene was more impressive. I'm not sure why, yes. but it just, it was the description of the scene is so cool cool the way she appears yes no it was a very very well written fight scene like you Mm -hmm. could just visualize it so easily definitely so Irene seems to have some healing um she seems to be from like a healing bloodline Mm -hmm. um so for helping her with these people that wanted to beat her or whatever it was they wanted to do there could have been much more dark yeah um she decides to help selena with her injuries that she got from a roven Mm -hmm. and selena also teaches her a little bit of self-defense and like to stand up for herself because she was very much in awe of selena and her ability to take these guys down so selena kind of showed Irene some moves and almost empowered her a little bit. And in the end, they kind of helped each other out. She's fought these men off. Selena's fought these men off. She's given Irene some fighting skills. And then Irene has in return helped her with her injuries. Mm -hmm. And so Selena feels like she would like to kind of gift her one last thing. So she leaves her a bunch of money and jewels and encourages her to go forth and kind of do something that she'd mentioned she'd wanted to do before kind of magic stopped and all this harsh stuff had started happening to the world. So Selena encourages her to go to Tori Chesme, which is this healing school uh, in the Southern content. And she's gifted her all this money now so she can, if she chooses to go there. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, hope she does. And I hope we get to hear about it. Yes, me too. I was actually really hoping... (laughs) Her story would continue. It felt like her story ended too early. I agree. This this particular novella was definitely more of a slow burn, but it Mm -hmm. was short. And even though it was a slow burn, I was so intrigued by Irene's character. No, I agree. I think it was worth worth the read. For sure. So next up, we have Assassin and the Desert. So Selena has made her way to the desert finally, and... Uh, to the assass- a silent assassin's base where the mute master resides. Yes, and it's kind of cu- like I almost I almost want to say culture shock mm-hmm. to her. Yeah, and it's very competition heavy there. Very competition heavy. Whereas at the silent assassins, everyone seems to be more cooperative, cooperative. with each other and like supporting of each other. Mm-hmm. So that's like a huge, like it's just a really strange feeling because I know when I heard she was going to the Silent Assassins, I thought, okay, their Silent Assassins is going to be very different. But I definitely wasn't expecting it to be like warmer (laughs) emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. It seemed like it would be maybe a bit harsher, but they were very welcoming and they all ate communally and like, it's kind of like at the dinner table our assassin life is put on pause and we're just friends. Yeah. I actually really liked it reading about the mm-hmm. silent assassins. Yeah. It seemed like a nice place to be an assassin. <laughs> you did. If one was going to be an assassin. I if one's going to be an assassin. Fair. But also just the fact that they're not, it's not like the assassins keep where it's just so cutthroat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Literally like so cutthroat. But it's really cool because she actually makes a girlfriend Yay. at the Silent Assassins, which she doesn't have very many friends that we know of. Like, I mean, she grew up as an assassin being trained. So mm-hmm. I don't think she really had a chance to go to school and make friends. 
No, like she had an abnormal life. Mm -hmm. So it's really, yeah, exactly. So it's really cool to see her make a friend, like just something so Mm -hmm. little is like, and basic is making a friend. And it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. It makes you realize how bizarre her life is. It definitely does. It puts Mm -hmm. into contrast the harshness of the reality she's had to live. And I think it's also very easy for authors to write women against each other. So the fact that they met each other and were like instantly friends, Mm -hmm. it was like really nice to see that. That's a really good point that you make. Um, That's quite often how it's done, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I hadn't even noticed that until you (laughs) pointed it out. But yeah, that's done a lot. Something else we learn about that's introduced in this story is the witches. Oh, I know. They're so scary. They are so scary. And I haven't heard witches done like this before. So Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, what is this? (laughs) (laughs) Like Selena's scared of them. Which says so much. If she's Mm -hmm. scared of them. And she doesn't seem to be, like we said at the beginning, she has this confidence, this swagger to her. So she is scared of them. They must be very powerful. Mm -hmm. And vicious. Yes. I think that's a really good way to describe them. Yes. Vicious. We uh, also learn about something really cool in this book, um, Spider Silk. (gasps) Oh, yes. The giant spider. Did you also picture the spiders from Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Giant spiders. They're a thing. They're a thing. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, they're super scary, so they got to be in everything. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But they're kind of cool because they can, like, they're intelligent beings. Mm -hmm. And um, they hold their spider silk very uh, kind of dearly to them. And they will only Mm -hmm. trade like crazy things for the silk, not money, something worth much more value or something that has much more value rather than money. Mm -hmm. So such as time off your life. (laughs) Which is crazy. That is crazy. It is crazy. And the guy who she, the vendor who she met that introduced her to spider silk, he looked old, but he was just young. And it was because mm-hmm. he had traded so much of his life for this stuff. Yeah. He got quite a lot of the spider silk and he thought it was worth it. Do you think it would be worth it? No. Mm-hmm. Like depending. Okay. So yeah. if I'm 80 years old and I'm like dragging my carcass <laughs> up to the spiders to get some spider silk to sell for my family so I had something to leave them okay yeah. right yeah. I'm 80 I've lived my life <laughs> but <laughs> but like right now or when I was this vendor's age because he's quite young mm-hmm. he's in his 20s isn't he he's quite like a young guy that is that's that's it's a, a big commitment it's a bold move, bold move. <laughs> and maybe one made before he realizes that, you know, time is, is much more valuable than money. Mm -hmm. So, and it it doesn't seem like it's something he can get back. I don't know how that works. I think it's if the spider that gave you the silk dies, then you get your life back. So I wonder if that'll come up later. I wonder if we will see that come back. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't know Interesting. that. Interesting. I just had a thought, but <laughs> I'm I'm going to keep it to myself for now. Like a, a spoiler for a future book? <laughs> yes, exactly. Because we, Dang. at this point, have, have read further than just this one book. So she's at the vendor because Ansel, who is the friend that she met. So Ansel's sort of this in-between between Lord Beric, who is the ruler of the town, and the silent assassins. And she goes and meets with him and kind of like smooths things over. So there's no trouble between the assassins and this town. And while she's meeting, that is when Selene is at this vendor and seeing um, all the different things that are on offer and the spider silk being probably the most interesting of what she encounters. Totally. She also um, couldn't help but indulge herself in some lovely slippers. Yes. It yes. did sound gorgeous. She loves her fashion. Other, she does. 
I mean, I can't help. I uh, can't blame her. Yeah. (laughs) And while she's there, she also indulges in one other prized possession. Her and Ansel take it upon themselves to steal some of Lord Beric's horses. (laughs) She didn't really have a choice, though. No. Because Ansel (laughs) Ansel kind of was like, I stole this horse and we gotta go kind of thing. <laughs> and so Elena, she... the only way she could keep up was to steal one of the Asterian horses. <laughs> those are like priceless, those horses. Or they're just, they're worth a lot of money. They are. They're the the fey, the fey red made. horses. Yeah. They made horses. Yeah. So they're very, very uh, rare horse, I'm guessing. Yes. Very rare, very valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, so that also makes the fact that they stole anything from Lord Beric worse. Never mm-hmm. mind the fact it's two Asterian horses. But in a way, this actually leads to something good because in admitting that they've stolen these horses and she kind of takes the blame for it, the mute master agrees to train her, which is sort of what she's been That's needing right. the whole time she's been there because she needs yes. this letter of approval, which she can only get if he trains her and gets to know her. So I guess something good did come out of stealing the horses. It it was it gave Selena the opportunity to show her character was worthy to the mute master. Mm-hmm. So that was the good thing that came out of that for sure. And then a big twist happens in the story, something I was not expecting. Yes. And broke my heart a little, to be honest. Yeah. Is Ansel, she has actually been conspiring against the silent assassins with Lord Beric. Mm-hmm. So she's made a deal with Lord Beric that she wants her land back. Like her father's mm-hmm. land was taken by the witches and she wants it back. And Lord Beric has given her an option of getting it back. All she has to do is deliver the silent assassins yes, or like make it so that the town can kind of take over the silent assassins and kill them. So she has agreed to leave open the gate so that the townspeople or the town soldiers can sneak into the the assassins keep, not keep. The The silent assassins base. Fort base, yeah. (laughs) Surely it has a name, but (laughs) you get our point. (laughs) (laughs) But before she opens the gate, she does something that's completely evil, but also really nice. Where she takes Selena poisons her (laughs) and leaves her in the desert with the note from the mute master. Yeah. So I don't know if it was nice. I don't, I'm not sure. Like, I love that, that you're in a place where you think it was a nice thing to do. (laughs) (laughs) I just like to think she was looking out for her friend and didn't want her like to be involved. (laughs) That's, that's what I would hope it was. I I Mm kind of looked at it like, she knew Selena would help defend the silent assassins and mm-hmm. Selena is a very deadly person to have uh, as an enemy. So yes. she removed her, maybe it was a little bit of both. Yeah, um, probably. I would, I would hope, I mean, I, it did feel like Ansel's friendship was sincere and I think mm-hmm. that's why it makes it so much more heartbreaking the fact that the first time she ever made a girlfriend ended with betrayal like this. It's, yeah. it's sad for her. It was so sad. Yeah. But eventually Selena figures out what's going on and returns to the silent assassin base yes. and helps, helps everybody. She makes sure that the uh, mute master doesn't die. She saves him mm-hmm. and she does something I think within her character, but maybe it seems without um, outside of her character at the moment, where she actually lets Ansel go, even though yes. Ansel has tried to kill the mute master and has uh, like so many people have died because of the decision she made. Mm-hmm. She said, "You can go, but you have to go now." Yeah, I think Selena understands why Ansel did it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not because she's evil, but she has all of these. She has her own motivations to do it, and it's not evil motivations. The way she did it wasn't great, but I mean, Selena surprises me over and over again with her softness because there is a softness to her that is Mm -hmm. surprising considering what she is. Yeah, no, I completely agree. You would think someone who has 
lived the life she's lived wouldn't have those moments. And it's so nice to see them. She seems to definitely carefully consider the lives she takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless they're just kind of like fodder, like a bunch of guys just attacking an innocent woman. They're gone. (laughs) She has dealt with them now. But I mean, with her friend or anything like that, she's got takes it into consideration. She's not just going to coldly kill somebody she became friends with. Yeah, no. So, yeah. And as a thanks, the Mute Master does give her the actual note that she needs, Mm -hmm. along with a bunch of money. I would like to say thank you. Let her keep the horse, too. And the horse. And the horse. Yeah. So she is then able to return to Rifthold. Mm. So she returns with her horse, her money, and her notes, and brings them back to Aroban to prove that she's, you know, done what he's requested. Yeah, she's finished her punishment for being disobedient, and that takes us straight into the assassin in the underworld. Yeah, and at this point, she has no idea what has happened to Sam. She doesn't know if he's alive. She doesn't know if he's dead. Yeah, whether he's been she- maimed irreparably, <laughs> like she doesn't know. But so when she comes in, she's she comes into the the keep and immediately. She ha- doesn't even get to change out of her dirty traveling clothes. Um, mm-hmm. She speaks to Aerobin and he gives her another assignment straight away. Mm-hmm. And he's being very apologetic and like mm-hmm. schmoozy and mm-hmm. giving her a bunch of gifts. And making excuses like, well, why didn't you know? Why didn't you send for me if you regretted it? Well, you know, by the time word got to you, you probably would have been on your way back anyway. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, this guy's such a jerk. He's so manipulative. Uh, He's so self-serving. It's just gross. But so she ends up running into Sam on the way up to her rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, And there seems to be some company in the house. So, um, but what's interesting is when she runs into Sam and she was feeling so fondly towards him when she was kicked out of there. Um, Mm -hmm. When she comes back, you know, she's, she was really worried about him. But then when she sees him, she's filled with suspicion because of how Ansel had betrayed her. So she's kind of damaged by that relationship. Yes. Yeah. Um, she almost pulls back on how we think she's going to react when she sees him. It's very different. It's very different. I was so disappointed, but it, it's realistic. Like she's it's cautious so and n- not trusting. Not that she was the most trusting person before, but now she's like, ooh. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's Uh, realistic given her age. If you're remembering, like she's 16, maybe 17 at this point. Yeah, and that's an intense age, right? Yeah, and this is how teenagers interact with each other. You like somebody, you don't just like. Even if you're a confident person, you're not just walking up to them, being like, "Hey, I notice you have feelings for me. I have feelings for you." It's like, no, we got to do the song and dance. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um. Yeah, and but then she remembers, and this is something that we had actually been talking about, like, when did this happen? Because we know this happened at some point. We just weren't sure which novella had happened, so mm-hmm. we, we did find it. And it was at this point that she remem- She has a kind of a flashback almost to mm-hmm. when she was being beaten in the Aerobin's office. And she remembers that he roars at Aerobin that, like, I'll kill you because Mm -hmm. he's hurting Selena. And um, that makes her remember that, oh, no, if anything, that makes him different from Ansel because, you know, he he would he's he could have betrayed me so many times and he never did. Yeah. In fact, he's betrayed his master. Yeah. And sworn to kill his master for her. As you were her. saying that, I was like getting chills just thinking about that moment because like it really shows the depth of his commitment to her. Yeah, definitely. That I don't think that she's super aware of like she knows maybe, okay, he would never betray me, but does she understand why? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so she's having these feelings of like, yeah, he'd never betray me. And then Lysandra comes out. <laughs> Yes, Lysandra. Yeah. I don't get warm feelings about Lysandra when we meet her. Lysandra. She's 
obviously her and Selena have locked horns in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've kind of grown up side by side. She is a courtesan, Selena, Selena as an assassin. Mm-hmm. And they have very similar lives, and yet they are very much pitted against each other. Yeah. Yeah, so she's she's very upset, angry. Anger is kind of her go-to thing. Mm-hmm. She's very, very angry that Sam and Lysandra seem close. And Lysandra almost seems possessive of Sam. Yeah. She's getting the feeling that she suspects maybe Sam was sleeping with Lysandra. That's, you know, so that doesn't feel good <laughs> to think that. Yeah, and I think she goes as far as to be like, oh, I kissed somebody when I was away. Or yeah. almost kissed somebody when I was away or something yeah. to like make them feel jealous or like make yeah. them feel the way she was feeling in that moment. It was a very, very teenaged move for sure. <laughs> yes. It was, But I mean, like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, there are people online who are, again, I mentioned this again, so frustrated by her character in Assassin's Blade. And it's mm-hmm. like, you need to remember she's a teenager. <laughs> and, yes. you know, if you if you remember that, then it's like, yes, this, although she is a sense. very capable killer, she is has the emotions of a teenager. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she's going to behave like a teenager. Yeah, exactly. So she has this assignment. And in order to do recon for the assignment, they end up going to party. Yes. The target is going to be attending this party. Mm -hmm. She wants to kind of just get to know him and I guess help to devise her plan a little bit. Yeah. And it it was kind of interesting because it goes back to that uh, kind of, the way that she justifies her job. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So she sees him being sleazy with these girls and just Mm -hmm. being kind of a pig with these girls. And in, I feel that that made that idea of killing him sit easily with her. Yes. And this is supposed to be another present for her because he's supposed to be someone who's involved in the slave trade and bringing the slave trade to Rifthold Mm -hmm. um, in a new way. And so Aropan's like, oh, we found this person who's supposed to be doing the slave trade stuff. We know you're so against slave trade. So we're going to let you kill this man. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) And she does eventually attempt to do so. Uh, But one thing I liked about the scene at the party was I feel like kind of going back to her being a 16 year old. I think we see another glimpse of that at the party, but not in so much of a hormonal way, but just yeah. in a, like she's 16, she's having fun. She's dancing. Yeah. She's yeah. maybe having a few too many, which yeah. perhaps isn't quite age appropriate, but different time, <laughs> different place. Yeah. And yeah, we just see her letting loose a little bit. Yeah. And she's determined to let loose too. She's mm-hmm. determined to have fun and just live in the moment and have fun. Yeah, so there's a little Easter egg in this story that is is actually so cool. And another good reason to read this first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because yeah, we'll we'll inform you in a next ep- next episode. No, probably a few episodes from now. In a future episode, <laughs> we'll talk about this Easter egg a little more. Mm-hmm. But it's just really cool to realize that that was put in there. Yeah, and what we know in this novella is that like we said she was dancing and it specifically says she's dancing with this man in a mask who has sapphire eyes that's what we know at this point eyes but he sounds beautiful (laughs) but like he's wearing a mask yes so all all she notices she notices the sapphire eyes and she notices his Mm -hmm. companion is a little bit grouchy yeah a little brooding perhaps doesn't want to be there as much as the man she's dancing with (laughs) yes and they have some flirtatious moments, and it's really fun mm-hmm. for her, you know? It's like what she should be doing as a normal person mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> instead of, you know, just going out killing people. But, yeah. So after the party, she pays off. She decides to use the money she was gifted by the silent assassin to pay off mm-hmm. the... Uh, debt that she owed to a Robin so she could be free. So she says, I'm paying off my debt. You no longer own me, but I will still do jobs for you. Like I'll still work with you, but 
I am a free person at this point. Yeah. And that is a little nerve wracking because you know, a Robin wants to own her. Mm -hmm. So that was, but she, she, she just cannot be owned by somebody who wants to do the slave thing. Yeah. And the fact that he beat her the way that he did. Yeah. I think that she like thought about it for a while and was like this. Yeah. It was just, she was at the point where she needed to yeah. have some separation from him. Yes. And she was gifted something that allowed her to actually realize that potential. Mm-hmm. So Sam and Selena go and they do kill their target. Yes. And one thing that happens when she's doing some more recon is she gets trapped in the sewers. And this yes. is like, I guess maybe her first attempt at trying to kill the target and it goes poorly and she ends up getting trapped in the sewers and Sam saves her. So yeah. then it's decided that they should do this mission together mm-hmm. and they and are successful. They are successful, except then they find out that the target, so she thought, yes, I killed that jerk. <laughs> He's, mm-hmm. He was bringing slave trade to Rifthold. That turns out that wasn't true. He was actually working against like against bringing slaves. Yeah. To he was trying to prevent and um, he was trying to keep the people who were rebels hidden. Like he had a yeah. list of rebels mm-hmm. and he was trying to He was to a key sure player. Yes. And Selena and Sam killed him thinking it was the opposite. Mm-hmm. So that's another a Robin. A Robin being a completely twisted Mm-hmm. Mind game playing person. He's evil. I want to see use other words, but I want to use simple. other words too. I know. Could get real colorful up in here. But. <laughs> I definitely could. <laughs> uh, but that brings us on to Assassin and the Empire, which is the last novella of Assassin's Blades. Yeah. And how does that one start off? Well, she has moved into her apartment that she bought with her money and she sells her. Super special as Tarian horse. Uh, Sad, but so for good she can, reason. yeah, well, so she can free Sam. Mm-hmm. So she frees Sam and he moves in with her. Sam admitted something to Selena that to try and help her with, mm-hmm. with uh, her feelings and her thoughts. And it, he said, you know, it sounds a bit silly, but I say it to myself and it helps me feel better. And so he would say to himself, I am Sam Cortland. And I will not be afraid. And this was something that he, a mantra that he would mm-hmm. repeat to himself when he felt afraid <laughs> to, to kind of help give himself some confidence. And so Selena, you know, she's kind of like, oh, okay, you know. So they are both completely free of mm-hmm. a Robin, but mm-hmm. they're still part of the Assassin's Guild. Is that what it's called? That's right. Yes. And, um, they kind of seem to dream a, a bit together about leaving the continent continent completely to mm-hmm. go live their lives somewhere else. And um, it does seem like a pipe dream, but they start to figure out a way that they can get the funds to make this happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, at this point, it's been declared, like they clearly love each other. They're together romantically. Like Mm -hmm. Sam, as it turns out, has loved her for many, many years, which, you know, I don't think Selena felt that same way, but it's just the fact that he (laughs) has loved her for many years is so it's very touching. It's very touching. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And so they, they end up finding this really high paying job. Mm -hmm. And there's some mystery surrounding it, but that's fairly normal in the assassin world. You don't Mm -hmm. always know who your client is. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously when somebody is hiring you to kill someone, they might want to keep their identity secret. So they didn't think anything of it. Um, Well, they thought Selena was a little wary because of who the targets were. Yes. It's well known. uh, It's a crime Lord. The, the mm-hmm. crime lord the of Rifthold and his bodyguard. 
So mm -hmm. it's it's known that these guys are nearly impossible to assassinate, but she's Selena Sardothian and they can do anything, right? <laughs> but unfortunately, so they decide on a kind of a divide and conquer kind of strategy. Very, very strange decision, in my opinion, but for Sam them, it was seems... so I think he was almost feeling emasculated. It felt like he was like, No, like you freed me. I want to pull my own weight. And yeah. so I want to make this kill by myself and you can go kill the other one or whatever. Mm -hmm. They came to that agreement, but it was a really bad decision. It was a life altering decision that I think that they probably both regret. Yeah. So when Sam goes out to kill his target, mm -hmm. Selena is waiting for him at home. And I've said this before, but I think we can <laughs> relate to what it's like when you send someone out, maybe on some really bad roads in the winter or something, and mm -hmm. they're supposed to be home at a certain time, and then they're not showing up, and you can't get a hold of them. And it's a really anxiety-inducing thing. You feel yeah. nervous. You feel the sense of dread, right? You know? Mm -hmm. um, this is what Selena is going through. She's waiting for Sam to return and time is going on and on and he's just not coming back. She knows he'd be furious if she went out and helped him. Yeah, so she, she really makes fights herself against... wait. Yeah. I'm out, just charging out there and finding him. Mm -hmm. She has this intuition and she's like, no, I need to respect his choices. And she holds off. Yeah. And then... That ends up kind of costing both of them because in the morning she gets a visit and is told that Sam has died and has been left at the keep as mm -hmm. like a, here's your assassin. Mm -hmm. And so she goes to the keep to see him. And what she learns is not only has he been killed, he's been brutally tortured in the most horrific way you can possibly imagine. He was captured and this Farron, the one that he was sent to kill, mm -hmm. um, he is the bodyguard of the crime lord and he's a sick and twisted, sadistic man. And he poisoned Sam with this thing called Gloriella. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it completely immobilizes a person, paralyzes you but keeps you conscious from what I understand. Or at least when terrifying. you're what Yeah. At least when you come to, I'm not sure if it knocks you out, but when you, whatever, when you come to, you are mm -hmm. aware of what's going on, but you're paralyzed. Oh, this, I just want to mention this part because this part was mm -hmm. really brutal for me. <laughs> this, this mm -hmm. was the part that had the most impact on me was when she curled up next to Sam's body. Cause she needed to see his body to know that he, to, to believe that he was gone. Yeah. Um, and when she sees his body, he's all obviously been tortured. You know, he's mm. sl sliced up and everything is awful. Yeah. She curls up on the table next to him and she can smell. She's trying to smell him, you know, mm -hmm. to breathe in his scent like you do with someone you love. And she can smell this other scent mixing in with him. And it turns out it's the Gloriella that they had yeah. used on him. So that part for me, her grief and how it kind of completely immobilized her um, mm -hmm. and how she refused to, she, she just laid beside him and it, oh gosh, I just found that so viscerally upsetting. <laughs> like it was intense. Was, it was such an impactful moment. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. After that, I actually had to put the book down and take an evening because I was so disturbed and upset mm -hmm. by Sam's death. So and they go into some detail about what happened. Like we're being a little vague here, but yeah. I believe they go into quite a bit of detail about what was actually done. They do. And I actually ran into a fan art of this moment where he's laying mm -hmm. on the table and she's curled up next to him. I actually ran into that about 10 minutes before I read the scene. And I'm honestly glad that I saw that fan art first 
although Mm -hmm. it did give me a disturbing visual, but I'm glad I saw it first because I did not expect it to go down that way. Yeah. I knew I I knew that she and Sam were not necessarily end game. Mm-hmm. But I did not expect it to be like this. No, it definitely was shocking to so, read what ended up happening to him. Yes. And heartbreaking and yeah, Just it was awful. So she decides she she needs, like, after coming out of her shock, sort of, mm-hmm. she decides, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go exact revenge. And then yeah. she just she goes to do that. Mm-hmm. But it goes all wrong because it turns out that was the whole plan. The yeah. whole plan was to draw her in in a rage the way that she did. She does manage mm-hmm. to kill her target, which was the crime lord. Yeah. But that also turned out to be part of the plan. Yeah, I know. And they ended up using the Gloriella on her. And then Farron mm-hmm. ends up capturing her. So she understands the helplessness that Sam would have felt while he was being tortured, which I think, oh my goodness. Like as if Sam being killed and tortured wasn't bad enough. Mm-hmm. She also now has an intimate understanding of how helpless he was while he was being tortured. And she has no idea. She's like, am I going to get tortured? What are they going to do? So she's just sitting there waiting to find Mm -hmm. out what are they doing with me? Why have they just kept me here? And And she's utterly helpless, completely helpless. So that's very, I think, traumatizing for her. Definitely. So, but then she's taken to the king. Yes. Because it turns out he did this to capture her, to take her to the king. Yeah. And when she goes to see the king, he has no, like, he knows she's Selena. And he's like, oh, I'm not just going to hang you like I would typically with an assassin or someone I've captured. I think that's too good for you, essentially. Mm -hmm. He's like, I Mm -hmm. want you to suffer. So he ends up sending her to the salt mines, to like a slave camp for her to kind of relive day in and day out this brutal treatment. And I think he makes a point of saying like, I want her to survive as long as possible. Cause typically people in the salt mines don't last for very long because of the harsh conditions. So that kind of yes. tells you he what wants she's her to, going to be going through. He wants her to die a slow agonizing death. Mm-hmm. Precisely. So as Selena is being brought to the salt mine, she's like put into this carriage or wagon type thing and she's being brought to the salt mines and we see a Roben and the bodyguard on the roof and Mm -hmm. at this point we see the perspective of their perspective of what happened so the entire thing was planned by the two of them he was the one who hired Sam a Roben was the one who hired Sam also that the bodyguard could become the crime lord and that a Roben could get rid of Sam and punish Selena. So this entire event, a series of events was orchestrated all because a Robin does not like to share his things. Yeah. And when I read that, the amount of rage that filled my body is like nothing I have ever felt before. I was so upset in finding out his motivation behind what he had done to her. Oh my goodness. It's the betrayal is so severe. I don't know if I've ever read a betrayal like that ever. No, I have never. I've never read anything that made me feel so strongly ever. I mean, that kind of reveal alone is it's worth reading this entire book for. Totally. Also, it gives you a much better perspective of the depths to which a Robin will sink in mm-hmm. order to make his point. Yeah. It's just like absolute manipulation, psychological torture. Yeah. Killing of loved ones. Like. Yeah. Yeah. The physical <laughs> stuff. The physical aspect of it. It just, I'm almost speechless. The, mm-hmm. It's so sadistic. And it's just to- just because of his ego. 
Yeah, it's a hundred percent comes down to his ego. Yeah, and his need to control everything. Mm-hmm. It's sick. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he has he's up against somebody who is his match in so many ways and beyond. Oh, absolutely. And that's going to be unfortunate for him one day. Mm-hmm. He has completely underestimated Selena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he thinks he has control over her. And this is just another way for him to exact that control over her. Exactly. And I think at this point, he thinks he's winning. Yeah. And maybe oh, at this particular point, he is winning. because I mean, he kind of is. Literally in a she's, wagon. She's going to Endovier's. It's She's a prisoner at this mm-hmm. point. And but broken. Spiritually totally broken. Totally broken. Completely broken. But on the way to Endovier, she sees a stag, which is the symbol of her homeland, Terrison. Mm-hmm. And that kind of fills her with a strength. And then she remembers what Sam told her about how she can help herself not feel afraid. So she says, my name is Selena Sardothian and I will not be afraid. And that just, it works for her. That works mm-hmm. for her. And it's a way that she can kind of carry Sam with her to help her feel unafraid. Yeah, so it not only keeps Sam with her, but it's uh, just something to motivate her in general. So she's going to basically hell on earth and she needs a way to stay positive if positive is the right word. And just kind of having those words. It's a comfort. Light. Yeah, it's a comfort. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Mass has a way of ending stories in very eloquent and impactful ways and this was the absolute perfect ending for this book yeah and if you were to read this book first which we suggest if you watched our our non-spoiler review this exact moment kind of explains in a lot of ways why we think reading this book first is Mm -hmm. the better choice (laughs) yeah i mean keep keep your eyes out for (laughs) this phrase because Mm -hmm. I just feel that if you hadn't read this, you wouldn't know why that phrase is so important. You might think, why is she saying that? That's kind of lame. It might clear it up when you read it the romantic order way. Oh, that's why she says that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when, when you read it in the purest order and you come across those times that she does say it, it's a little bit like if you're looking for emotional impact, it's a little bit of a, ugh you know, to the Mm -hmm. heart a little bit because it reminds you of Sam and his love that he had for her. Yeah. And it just almost feels like a little, you feel that strength that it's giving her. Totally. Um, Overall, I thought this book was fantastic. It, It possibly elicited one of the most visceral reactions I've had related to a character death in Mm -hmm. of the many hundreds of books I've read, I, I don't know if I've reacted in so strongly to a character death as I did to Sam's. Yeah, I agree that like this book, it, it was a different moment for me, but it was the same in that I had a reaction to it that I've never had before from reading a book. Mm-hmm. And for a book to give you such a strong reaction, like, you don't come across that very often. Like it's kind of a, a special book in that way. It is special. It makes it worthy of your time. It's worthy of a read. For yeah, definitely. Sure. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. On next week's episode, we'll introduce the next installment of the series, Throne of Glass. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye for now. Bye.